Hello, good morning. Excellencies, Ministers of Health, Tourism, Economy, Ambassadors, General Consuls, Attaches, Tourism Board Officials, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Global and Caribbean Ministerial Summit on Medical Tourism. My name is Armando Juarez and I'm with the Medical Tourism Association. Um, I want to uh, talk to you uh, about this very important industry uh, and the purpose of the webcast is, uh, first of all, let me just a moment while I get the slide. All right. We will cover the following topics. We'll do an industry overview. Uh, we're also going to be talking about what the Ministerial Summit is. Uh, we're going to be speaking about the Caribbean Summit as well and how a government can further develop its medical tourism industry. Now, uh, before we go into that, uh, we would like to mention our sponsors. Mutera Global Alliance uh, is the largest U.S. private sector organization that specializes in joint venture partnerships with health systems, governments, hospitals, and physicians. Uh, we are also sponsored by UC San Diego Health System, um, U.S. hospitals has ranked uh, UC San Diego Health System as one of Americans' uh, best hospitals in 10 specialty areas. Now you may ask yourself, how big is this industry? How big is medical tourism? Well, according to the uh, United Nations World Tourism Organization, 1 billion tourists travel internationally in 2012. Uh, now, travel and tourism contributes to 9% of global GDP, more than $6 trillion, and accounts for 255 million jobs in 2011. Um, how much revenue um, does the medical tourism tourists generate on average? This is a very frequent question that we get, uh, and here are some uh, solid statistics for you. According to a survey uh, done by the George Washington University School of Business in collaboration with the MTA, between $3,500 and $10,000 in revenue for medical services are spent by uh, average medical tourists. Uh, between $7,500 and $16,000 in total revenue uh, from a, a single trip. And just uh, on tourism and hospitality, between $4,000 and $6,000. Uh, this represents five to ten times more in tourism and hospitality than the average tourist. Uh, this can give you an idea of how important uh, this uh, unique segment of tourism is and uh, the revenues that it can generate. Uh, if you expand uh, to one million medical tourists, the potential revenue is 7.4 to $15.8 billion. Uh, potential revenue for other industries that surround medical tourism, uh, also in uh, having 1 million medical tourists, is between 3.9 and 5 billion going to supporting industries uh, for medical tourism. Now you may ask, what are the benefits uh, to a country? Uh, why should a country invest and develop its medical tourism industry? Well, there are several um, areas uh, where these benefits can be seen. One is the social impact. Uh, when a country develops and engages in medical tourism, uh, its health systems, uh, its health infrastructure will be further developed. It will be enhanced. It will be improved. Uh, and that means better hospitals, better clinics, uh, for the whole population, their local population. Um, also, it may translate into speedier and more affordable health care. Uh, as more hospitals participate, uh, it drives competition up and that lowers the costs. There's also a definite financial impact. Uh, medical tourism is a, a key money producer uh, that contributes to the um, GDP of a country. Uh, a as far as the intellectual impact, it reverses brain drain. A lot of uh, doctors, physicians, um, health um, uh, professionals will oftentimes 
go to other countries to practice, but having a solid medical tourism industry will allow them to stay and practice in their own country, uh, therefore retaining the country's talent. Uh, also, there's a political impact. Uh, constant exchange of treatment and revenue between countries improves their political links, uh, improves the relations uh, between countries, and it does that in a positive manner. Uh, oftentimes, hospitals have a reciprocal type of uh, relationship where they refer patients to one another uh, for mutual benefit. Now, it's very important that this webcast is uh, designed to uh, inform the government officials about this industry and what their role is. Um, government, as you can see from this uh, chart, uh, plays a key vital role uh, along with the other uh, stakeholders. There's the healthcare industry as well. The travel industry is part of medical tourism, the airlines, hospitality, all the hotels and uh, different lodging accommodations. Um, also, uh, you know, general tourism, tour operators, transportation companies, chambers of commerce, and non-government organizations as well. Uh, now, in, in order to, for a country to get the word out that they are doing a medical tourism, uh, they need to develop an international brand. Now, uh, within this international brand, uh, perception of the destination is very important, uh, being uh, a destination that is regarded as a fun, uh, great vacation uh, destination is certainly one of the key considerations. Also, safety concerns. Uh, is it a safe country? Uh, is the cult culture friendly? Um, the language is also, uh, culture and language are also important considerations. Um, the value of the solutions, uh, for many travelers, um, there are different considerations. Uh, a lot of traveling patients, some uh, consider affordability as their main driving factor in seeking health care outside of the region. Uh, but there are other uh, reasons why patients travel uh, abroad. Um, some of those reasons uh, may be also accessibility. For example, uh, in Canada, England, and Australia, uh, there are health systems that provide health for all of their uh, citizens, their population, uh, th they come at no cost. However, there are long uh, waiting periods. And for someone, for example, that may be um, having uh, you know, problems with liver or you know, some vital organs, uh, uh, you know, heart troubles, they may not want to wait like, you know, several months for their uh, turn. So a lot of people opt to go from one country to another seeking immediate medical assistance. Um, there's also uh, the issue of uh, specialties. Maybe a particular um, medical procedure is not available in their country or is not approved uh, to be uh, performed. So patients seek uh, health care elsewhere in other countries. Uh, these are certainly some factors that um, uh, government officials must take into consideration uh, as potential markets for their medical tourism industry. Uh, for example, Panama uh, is looking for alternative sources of revenues as it faces possible competition from Nicaragua to create a canal and compete for business. Uh, there may be other challenges and uh, changing conditions in different countries, but as you can see in this example with Panama, they are looking into medical tourism as a possible revenue generator to offset that competition in other areas uh, of their economy. Now, I would like to give you a few facts um, that were published. According to Bloomberg, uh, Taiwan attracted 90,000 medical tourists in 2012. Um, also, they have 22 healthcare facilities certified by the Joint Commission International, um, only six fewer than all of China combined. Uh, according to Bloomberg, 
110,000 foreigners visited Turkey in 2012. And in that country, there are more American accredited hospitals than any other nation. Uh, Brazil is also one of the leading places for plastic surgery with more than 4,500 licensed cosmetic surgeons. And you can see the other um, uh, statistics, in fact, about medical tourism um, that you know many are readily available uh, on the internet. Uh, there's currently a race uh, between nations to develop their own medical tourism industry. This is a uh, tremendous booming industry, and uh, you know those countries that develop it early on will definitely have an advantage over others. Uh, it is not just the U.S. market that countries are really going after in baby boomers, but there are many other markets uh, with GCC countries, with uh, MENA countries. Um, um, you know, uh, there, there are different uh, countries and uh, in Europe and in um, Eastern Europe that uh, are li viable markets. And, uh, you know, we urge you to please let your government officials know. If you're not a government official, we ask you that you go to your uh, ministries, talk to your tourism boards, let them know that this is an emerging, uh, emerging industry and that um, it is, has tremendous potential to bring in revenues for your country. Now, I want to share with you um, a consumer perspective. These are the results of a medical tourism survey that was done by the George Washington University School of Business in collaboration with the Medical Tourism Association. Uh, one of the questions was, what services do they seek? Um, traveling patients, what uh, specialties are they looking for when they travel? Uh, as you can see in this pie chart, cosmetic surgical, surgical treatments account for 38% uh, of the, the total uh, number of specialties. Uh, dental is a close uh, second place. Orthopedic, 11%. Uh, Alternative or natural treatments, 8%. Bariatric, 8%. Uh, other uh, specialties account for 8%. Oncology and reproductive treatments account for 3% of this market. So in conclusion, um, you know, medical tourism is a complex, dynamic industry. Uh, it's really important to understand it and to be able to ask questions, get involved. Um, and one of the best places to do this, to understand the industry, to talk to the stakeholders, uh, people that are directly involved in developing this industry, is the Ministerial Summit on Medical Tourism uh, on November 3rd. Um, you may ask, well, what is this ministerial summit? Uh, it's an exclusive invitation-only forum where industry leaders and top stakeholders meet to present case studies, discuss best practices, share challenges and opportunities, and learn from experts that will be speaking about taking their medical tourism industry to the next level. This is really a place where uh, leaders, world leaders can get together, tourism leaders, and discuss, you know, what are they doing in their country? Uh, what steps can they take, um, you know, to develop their industry? What is the next step to take? Maybe they already have started, but they don't know what to do next, how to market and develop their country brand or city brand or uh, regional uh, brand. Uh, we also discuss, besides the medical tourism, we also touch on the subject of wellness tourism, which is a huge industry, as you all know. It's a big segment of general tourism. And, uh, you know, uh, spas, mineral baths, alternative health, uh, meditation, yoga, acupuncture, it's a very big uh, driving market, and uh, it's a very lucrative one as well. Uh, that's all tied in together with health tourism, being medical procedures, but also wellness. Um, and we discuss at this ministerial summit ways to develop uh, these industries. 
So how can your country be a part of this industry? Well, one of the uh, ways, uh, if you're a government official, you can attend the summit, you can look at our website, learn more about uh, medical tourism. Uh, if you're not a government official, we urge you to go to your consulate, uh, talk to your ambassadors, uh, you know, talk to your ministries, uh, uh, ask people, friends to reach out to your government officials and let them know about this uh, growing emerging industry. Now, uh, I have a, a short video clip that I will uh, show for you. Uh, please give me a moment and I will... I'm Renee Marie Stefano, president and co-founder of the Medical Tourism Association, and I would like to invite you to our annual Global Ministerial Summit, one of the few events in the world that brings together ministers of health, economic development, and tourism. I will recommend the Ministerial Summit because there is a need for the policymakers of the many sectors that need to work together to, to have a common understanding as to what is medical tourism and what policy should be developed around that and to share best practices around that. And as far as I am aware, there is not such a, 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 a forum right now. The summit, which focuses on both inbound and outbound medical tourism, as well as health and wellness of the local population, is based on regional and global collaboration, sharing of best practices, and the formation of new alliances. Summits like uh, this uh, ministerial summit on uh, medical tourism are important because that's where we share best practices, that's where we collaborate, and that's also where we can uh, network with respect to uh, the various um, norms, standards uh, that needs to be put in place, including also experience on uh, the regulatory framework, policy framework, strategies that work, and lessons that we can share with one another. So it is important to um, attend uh, uh, congresses and summits uh, such as this. Some of our topics include common challenges, public-private partnerships in healthcare investment and development, regional healthcare collaboration, innovation in management and reduction of healthcare costs, and other pertinent issues. Whether you are sitting next to the minister from Iraq, Brazil, the European Union, China, Russia, Mexico, or the United Arab Emirates, you will make a relationship which will grow your industry and improve the medical tourism industry for all. Oh, I think it is a, a, an opportunity for ministers, and you have described them, of the different sectors that need to talk to one another about medical tourism. If you are a minister or government official and would like to request an invitation, please email us at info at medicaltourism.com or call us at the U.S. number 561-791-2000. Yes, welcome back. Um, I hope you found that uh, video interesting and informative. Um, and you may ask, well, who are the attendees at this um, ministerial summit? Well, we have uh, ministers or secretaries of health, tourism, economy, economic development, foreign affairs, and also ambassadors, consul generals, attaches of health, tourism, or commerce, trade commissioners, and city, state, or federal tourism officers, also health officials. Uh, we also have other C-level, non-government officials present as well. Um, some of the uh, countries that uh, have participated in the past and are currently participating uh, here are shown by uh, each summit. Uh, the first part of the day, the half day, is, begins with the Caribbean Ministerial Summit. Uh, and then uh, there's a luncheon uh, that uh, all countries then join in and share. And then the Global Ministerial Summit begins. Uh, this, I have a brochure uh, that I will meet, make available after. Uh, if you contact me, I would be very glad to share the benefits and uh, the participating countries uh, for the Ministerial Summit. Uh, now, in the Caribbean Summit, uh, it includes expert presentations on regional issues, including case studies, uh, 
identifying popular procedures and treatments that best fit the Caribbean market, attracting investment to develop new facilities, and defining the roles and responsibilities for ministries and other government agencies, and the U.S. healthcare reform and its impact on island nations. Now, for uh, the summit, we have expert speakers. Uh, the keynote presentation uh, will be developed, uh, given by Darko Lovrick. He's a senior manager of uh, Hyperconnected World, and he's affiliated with the World Economic Forum. Um, he, uh, has, he graduated from the University of Oxford, and he has a Master's of Studies in Cognitive Therapy. Uh, he has uh, worked with uh, Goldman Sachs and Deloitte Consulting as well. Uh, we have Professor John Connell, Professor of Human Geography from the uh, University of Sydney, and he will be speaking on extremes, ethics, and inequality. Uh, John Connell uh, is consultant to the World Health Organization, the South Pacific Commission, the World Bank uh, as well. Uh, we will have uh, our own Rene Marie Stefano, President of the Medical Tourism Association, uh, who is a uh, recognized world leader in medical tourism, a global speaker, and also uh, an author of uh, several books and publications. Um, we also uh, have the honor of having Dr. Eric Sieber. He's the president of the European Union of Private Hospitals. He will be speaking uh, on an analysis on, on the UA, uh, European Union directive on cross-border healthcare. Uh, and also, uh, Dr. Mukesh Hariawala is a cardiac surgeon and healthcare economist, chairman and CEO of American Healthcare International. He will be speaking on Obamacare with global implications. Uh, other uh, topics in the agenda will be investing in healthcare for economic development and growth, uh, developing partnerships to provide care for chronic diseases, strategies and solutions under healthcare reform, sustainable healthcare driving tourism investment, and other topics as you can see um, in this list. Now some of the benefits for the participants, uh, when uh, you attend or your government official attends, they will receive a country medical tourism report. Um, as well as a practical guide to prepare for medical tourism. If your country has not yet uh, began, these are some steps that uh, your country can take to prepare itself for medical tourism. Also, uh, we'll be sharing best practices in forum notes, and we'll provide a, a great uh, environment to network between buyer and provider countries. Uh, this is crucial because this is one of the parts where the business uh, development and, and the business aspect of the ministerial summit takes place. It's not just informative uh, and a learning experience, but also connecting with other ministers and stakeholders in the industry and be able to engage in business discussions um, that uh, happen between countries. Uh, we also will be discussing new technologies uh, in regards to healthcare uh, and tourism. Testimonials, as you saw in the video, uh, Dr. Karen Seeley, she's a special advisor to the UN uh, and works with the Pan American Health Organization and the World Health Organization. Uh, she, was, um, she gave her testimony in the video about how it's worthwhile uh, to attend this summit. And uh, she will, uh, uh, you know, if you meet her at the event, she would gladly talk to you about um, the many benefits of the Ministerial Summit. Uh, also, uh, Dr. Wen Ramok Gopa, Deputy Minister of Health from South Africa, attended last year. Uh, we're looking forward to welcoming her uh, this year as well. And uh, she in indicated that summits like this one are crucial for government officials to attend because this is where they need to discuss the norms, the policies, uh, the framework, uh, things that are vital in setting up the infrastructure for uh, the development of this industry. Um, 
so what is uh, the next step? The next step is uh, to register. Register uh, to attend. You uh, have my contact information on your screen. Please uh, note it. Um, you can contact me either by phone or my email, and uh, you can register to attend. I would be very glad to welcome uh, you to our summit and to host uh, your country uh, at our event. Uh, if you're not a government official, I urge you to please contact your appropriate government official. Uh, it's, this is one thing that citizens can uh, do for their country. Uh, you can do for your people, for your population. You can bring in additional revenues uh, to your country by having your government officials engage in this very important, booming, emerging industry that, uh, according to Deloitte uh, Consulting, is a $100 billion industry. And like I mentioned, there's a race uh, between countries to get in, uh, develop their industry, and uh, have a piece of this market. Um, Uh, now I will open the floor to a uh, period of questions and answers. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I will uh, take a look at what we have. And I will give you a few moments. Uh, if you want to write something uh, on your screen, post a question to me. I'll be very glad to answer it. Otherwise, uh, uh, I'm always available on the phone or you can email me with any questions that you may have. Uh, for government officials, uh, we will be waiving uh, the registration fee to attend, so there will be no cost to participate uh, to this ministerial summit for the appropriate government officials. So I urge you to please uh, contact me uh, with any questions that you may have. I'll be very glad to talk to you and discuss a participation in the ministerial summit. All right. Well. Um, like I said, uh, I don't have any questions currently, but if you do uh, have some questions, uh, give me a call. And thank you very much for your time. Have a wonderful day. Uh, we will be having this broadcast uh, in Spanish at 1 p.m. New York time. Uh, so f please feel free if you are uh, a Spanish speaker or uh, your government officials uh, from Latin American or Spanish-speaking countries, feel free to join me again today at 1 p.m. Uh, for the webcast in Spanish. Thank you very much.